Helper tables are an essential tool in a Glide developer's repertoire, but you won't find a button in the data editor to create one. In our community and our experts channels, though, you'll often see developers talk about them. So what are they? Well, on a high level, there are two common uses for helper tables. The first way is to store temporary data. You can kind of think of this like the RAM for your app. Sometimes when you're building software on the back end, you need a place to temporarily store and process information. For example, when a user does a custom search or when data is being analyzed with specific parameters and then exported. After the user finishes with these processes, we don't need these values that they entered. They can just be cleared away. And a helper table is the perfect place to store these temporary values. So we keep them separate from our critical databases, but also can then link that information whenever we need to. The second very common use of a helper table is when we have a subset of data for a specific purpose, choices on a form or filters in a search. Sometimes these are also called worker tables, where you put discrete data into its own table to make it easier to manage. There are many ways that expert builders leverage helper tables. Let's take a high level look at a few examples of helper tables in action. Helper tables don't always have to do work in the form of computed columns. They can just be a simple way to track information that you use throughout your app when you present choices to users, lists of locations, days of the week, departments, and so on. Storing these elements in their own helper table allows you to find and adjust these values much faster than if you were to search your whole data set. Sometimes the standard Glide form doesn't give you exactly the functionality you need. In this case, you may need to build out a custom form in its own detail screen. To do this, we can create a helper table with each element we want on the form. We then give our users access to this row on a detail screen and create a button that sends these values as a new row to another table. That button also then clears the value in our helper table, ready for the form to be used again. And if we want to update the form, we can do that quickly in our helper table. Another great use case for helper tables is for creating custom filters and search screens. Instead of our helper table powering a form, it now gives each user their own control over the results of a query column, and then we show that in a collection. On our screen, we have choice components reading from our options table and then populating filter criteria in our helper table. We also have a text entry component allowing users to enter their own search terms. Our query column then uses these values in its filtering of our product data. It filters where the category includes the category choice, the same for the search choice, outlet choice, and the search term. And this is shown in our collection. We then have a button with a set column values action on it that just clears out our helper table search values ready for a new search for that user. So helper tables can be used like short-term memory for your app, or can be just a simple subset of data away from your larger data set. Either way, the purpose of a helper table is to do some kind of work in your app. That work might be user specific, like allowing users to do custom searches on a data set, or it might be something that's repeatable, like a custom form that you want to appear on multiple screens in your app. As we mentioned, helper tables can be used in many different ways. So to learn more or share how you use helper tables in your app development, join the discussion in our community.